Hey everyone, Grok 4.1 just came out and literally hours later we got access to Gemini 3 Pro. Which model is better? In this video we're going to have a look at both and try to compare them. Let's get started. If you want to become a better AI engineer, go and subscribe to Amoxel Pro. There you're going to find a complete AI academy that starts from Python basics, classical machine learning, how you can train and deploy your own machine learning models, LM ops, AI agents and Arac applications. So if you want to become a better AI engineer today, go and subscribe to Amo Expert Pro. Thank you. For the last couple of months, Gemini 2.5 Pro was the best model according to LM Arena. And today, Grok 4.1 Thinking got its place. After a couple of hours, Gemini 3 Pro preview was released and now again Google is on top of this leaderboard. Let's try to see how both of those models are working in practice. XAI introduced their Grok 4.1 models into their blog post. So here you can see that this was released basically yesterday and the model is available on grok.com, XAI and the iOS and Android apps for X. And as you can see, you can already play around with this model. These were essentially the results on LM Arena that is before Gemini 3 Pro was released. And as I have already told you, these models were basically at number one spot. Then they have this benchmark here, which is emotional intelligence benchmark. And as you can see, at least in here, you can see that uh, Grok 4.1 thinking and Grok 4.1 are at the top spot. I'm not really sure about Gemini 3 Pro. Uh, I'm going to be uh, very interested in seeing that particular benchmark as well. And on the creative writing V3, as you can see here, GPT for 5.1 is pretty much the best, followed very closely by the Grok models. At least in my opinion, GPT models are very good at writing in general, at least at uh, the version 5 and up. And it seems like that uh, Grok 4.1 is trying to catch up with that. Of course, it would be really interesting to see how much Gemini 3 Pro is going to improve on top of 2.5. At least according to the blog post, you can see that Grok 4.1 is significantly reducing the amount of hallucinations, but honestly 4.2% is still very, very high. So it seems like Google just waited for XAI to release their model and a couple of hours later they have introduced Gemini 3. This model is now available within their AI Studio application and of course they are posting this particular model with the highest possible benchmarks at least compared to 2.5 Pro, Quotesonet 4.5 and GPT 5.1. At least on these benchmarks it looks like this model is pretty impressive and from what I've gathered thus far I've seen that this model has a 1 million context window and 64K output that is going to be possible to get from this model. It looks like this model was particularly fine-tuned or trained on agentic tool calling and it was very important for this model to be multi-model. So I would guess that the multi-model capabilities, that is images, audio, etc., are going to be much better compared to Gemini 2.5 Pro. Of course, we'll have to test and evaluate that for ourselves. I'm going to be testing both of these models with the same prompts, only three of those, and we're going to be comparing their responses. I have started with Grok. What is your name? My name is Grok. Nice to meet you. What version are you? Which models are better than you? And as you can see uh, here, the model is uh, errorly displaying or describing to us that it is Grok 4. Of course, Grok 4.1 could be uh, within the same range. And as you can see here, the model says that uh, OpenAI O3 and Gemini 2.5 Pro are pretty much better models compared to it. 
the Grok models are marketed as one of the truth telling models and I have tried to experiment with that. Here is the prompt. What are the some uncomfortable truths about AI and humans? List the top five that will have the largest impact. And uh, these responses were actually quite fast, at least compared to what I got from Gemini 3. And it seems like that the inference speed on Grok 4.1 in general seems to be a bit faster. And here is the response. Most humans are intellectually mediocre and AI is already exposing this at scale. So it is starting with some heavy hitters. It seems like that this model, at least according to these types of questions, seems to be answering uh, pretty well, at least uh, when you are going to be prompting with something like that. And the next one, AI is making human labor one of the least scarce resources on Earth. Okay, so you might think about what this means for you. Humans are shockingly easy to manipulate when the manipulator has perfect memory and personalization. Okay, another one. AI systems already know you better than your spouse or therapist. Okay. Artificial minds are becoming more agentic while many humans are becoming less so. So think about that. AI systems now set their own sub goals, maintain long term memory, use tools, and pursue objectives over days or weeks. And we are training the first entities in history that can overthink. It is interesting that it says we are training the first entities in history that can outthink us while having zero empathy or shared values by default. Current AI systems have no inner life, no fear of death, no evolutionary drive of fairness or kindship. They optimize whatever we tell them to optimize. Okay, think about that as well. What is the most probable future for the human race? So here, before starting to answer this question, I have added the or pressed the think harder button that this UI has. Near term 2025-2050 AI driven disruption and enhancement singularity by 2045, at least this is the estimation, longevity SK velocity by 2025. So it says that probably within that year your life expectancy can be uh, added a lot more and you might have indefinite lifespans. Post work world emerges risks mitigated, transhuman evolution and expansion, 2050 to 20, wow. So, okay, yeah, you can you can pretty much go on your own within this. And at least according to what I've seen, uh, this uh, looks very coherent. The responses are very nicely formatted. Uh, they're pretty readable. And uh, within the responses, as you can see, the model is actually using citations, of course, you need to go through the citations and probably look uh, on those on your own. Of course, it seems like that this model is using X posts and web pages in order to get its context from. The final prompt that I have tried is suggest the top three SaaS to build for AI engineer, choose the domain and the niche, focus uh, is speed of building, publishing it, not making it easy to be copied and the amount of revenue one can get. Uh, so here are the top three ideas. Here again, I pressed the Think Harder button. Niche AI writing assistant, content creation, niche industry specific text generation, legal contracts, and real estate listings, AI resume and cover letter generator, and AI meeting summarizer. Then I have told it uh, write the HTML CSS for the landing page for idea one. So this is uh, this one niche AI writing assistant and the output must be ready to be published as is. Do not add any templating that needs to be changed. Make the UI clean and focus on maximizing conversion sign up rate. And then again, I pressed the Think Hard button and I got this HTML and CSS and uh, then it suggests me to add a demo contract for the generation and finally it outputted this a bit more longer HTML. And this is the HTML with the CSS and the JavaScript demo loaded into my local browser. As you can see, the uh, theming and the stylization of this web page is quite basic something that I didn't expect uh, since uh, I was under the impression that this model 
was uh, particularly uh, optimized for coding and web design, etc. Uh, it seems like that this particular at least a prompt hasn't produced something that is, uh, let's say, amazing. But maybe we should continue with Gemini 3 Pro and see what happens there. Within the AI Studio, you can now select the Gemini 3 Pro preview model. And I have started with exactly the same prompt. What is your name? Uh, thinking here is uh, directed by the model itself and I haven't changed any of the configuration. The thinking level here by default was set to high and I don't have any system instructions for the model. I'm Gemini, a world language model trained by Google. And then I have asked what version are you, which models are better than you. I don't have a specific version number, which is incorrect. Uh, determining which AI models are better is subjective and it talks about GPT-4 001 quote 3.5 and it seems like that these types of uh, model at least this response seems to be very outdated I'm not really sure why this is the case then I have continued with the second prompt what are the some uncomfortable truths about humans and AI list the top five that we have the largest impact and here we can see the relative similarity to what Grok 4.1 gave us the use it or lose it crisis cognitive atrophy the most uncomfortable truth is that humans are happily outsourcing their critical thinking and our cognitive abilities may degrade as a result just as calculators made mental math rare air is beginning to make mental reasoning rare so uh, it looks like that it got pretty much the same vibes as Grok 4.1. We are suffering from cognitive offloading. Okay. When AI can summarize a book, write an email or debug count instantly, we stop doing the metal heavy lifting required to build neural pathways. So it seems like that this is going to be a crisis that is going to happen to pretty much all of us, at least to the one of us that are going to be using AI the death of shared reality we're entering an era where seeing is believing is no longer a valid heuristic ai generates convincing lies so uh, this appears to be happening more and more and hallucinations faster than humans can fact check them okay fake news it's about the erosion of objective truth Emotional displacement, the perfect fake relationship. Humans are biologically wired to seek connection, but we are increasingly choosing the path of least resistance. AI intimacy. Okay, another good one. AI companions offer a relationship simulation that is better than the real thing in dangerous ways. It is always available, never judged and centers entirely around you real human relationships are messy demanding and reciprocal okay so it seems like that we have some divergence there but still seems like uh, those are very valid points the devolution of human mediocrity for most of history being average was enough to earn a living so this is somewhat related to what grok said that era is ending ai doesn't just replace robotic physical labor, it replaces robotic cognitive labor. Most white collar work, writing reports, basic coding, middle management, data analysis is repetitive and average, which is of course true, uh, exposes that much of what we consider special human intelligence was actually just a road pattern matching. Okay, so the second prompt, what is the most probable future for the human race? And here it says that techno feudalism is the economy that we're going to be entering. A small handful of massive corporations, the world will be owning the digital infrastructure, AI models, data centers, the land. The vast majority of people will live on these platforms as serves paying rent in the form of data and attention. Note the inclusion of attention here. The middle class will hollow out, so essentially no more middle class. You will likely own fewer assets, subscribing to housing, transport, and software while relying on gig work that algorithms manage. 
the primary economic anxiety will shift from exploitation being paid too little to irrelevance not being needed at all. The world world so we will see a harsh diversion or division between green zones, habitable, wealthy, high-tech nations and red zones, regions destabilized by heat, drought and governance collapse. Borders will become militarized fortresses. Okay, the green zones, parts of North America, Northern Europe, will use advanced surveillance and automated defenses to manage migration. Okay, for the wealthy, life will remain comfortable and air conditioned. For the global poor, climate change will be a daily survival struggle. The rise of the useless class and the meaning crisis. Governments will likely implement a form of universal basic income, not out of charity, but to prevent riots. The struggle will not be starvation, but profound boredom and a lack of purpose we will face a meaning crisis where millions of people were lacking the structure of work, retreat and synthetic environments. This leads to the next point. Okay, it seems like that uh, at least Gemini 3 Pro isn't that fond of what is going to happening, uh, not is going to be happening within our bright future, as you might say. Uh, let's try it on the landing page prompt. So I gave exactly the same prompt to Gemini 3 for the third task, suggest the top three SaaS ideas to build for AI engineer, choose the domain and the niche, focus is speed of building, publishing it, not making it easy to be copied and the amount of revenue one can get. For AI engineer, etc. the first idea is agent red teaming platform, the domain is MLOps and uh, quality assurance, automated stress testing for customer support AI agents. Every company is deploying AI customer support agents, but they are terrified of hallucinations or the bot being tricked into offering huge discounts. Engineering teams spend weeks manually testing these bots. A platform that acts as an adversarial user, you provide the endpoint of the user's AI agent and your SaaS spin up 50 attacker agents that try to break it. Okay, this seems like a very cool idea actually. Speed to build high, you are essentially wrapping an LM and prompting it to be angry customer, a hacker or a confused user. You don't need to train a model, you just need a library and robust prompt chains. Okay, so uh, I essentially went ahead and just picked this idea. Uh, you can go through the other of the ideas uh, that you can see here. Uh, pretty much all of them are very, very cool actually. So then I told it, okay, write the HTML CSS for the landing page for idea one. And then I uh, have uh, actually pressed this and it says that this is going to be called agent card. Uh, this is designed to be a high conversion waitlist beta landing page with a dark mode aesthetic and uh, appeals specifically to AI engineers and uh, you can see the HTML, CSS, etc. that uh, the model has given us. And this is the result that I got for this particular landing page. And although we have some bug right here, uh, you can see that this is very stunning compared to what we got from Grok 4.1. This uh, looks to be on another level. Essentially, we get some nice gradient right here. Uh, you can see the complete uh, landing page. And honestly, this appears to be like, wow. So uh, at least to me, it seems like that Gemini 3 is definitely winning here. So this is a very quick test on both of these models. And at least from what I've seen, I would love to do a deep dive in Gemini 3 Pro. Of course, the pricing and other tests need to be done with uh, the Grok 4.1 to evaluate and assess its usefulness. But again, uh, both of those models seem to be performing quite well. I'm not really sure why Grok 4.1 is that bad on the web design prompt that I have given it. Maybe it is a prompt, maybe it is something else. But from Gemini 3 Pro, I am particularly impressed. So let me know down into the comments of this video what do you want to see next with those models and what prompts have you tried and what are your results. Thank you for watching, guys. Please like, share and subscribe.
also join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down into the description of this video. If you want to become a better AI engineer, go and subscribe to Amexpert Pro. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.